guys, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm really glad to be here again because I was doing a short internship during January. And I could definitely say this is a way better time of year to be here in Edinburgh. Uh, a little warmer, for sure. So I want to tell you guys a little bit what I did. Oh, I think we stopped. Okay. okay, maybe that's better. Yeah, so what we did is we asked ourselves the following question. What's the connection between turbulence and tidal turbines? If you go through the papers and review a little bit of literature, you, you're going to find that people speak about energy generation fluctuations and a lot of environmental effects that may or may not be related to turbulence, but nobody looks into it in a, like nobody zooms in into the relation and the physics behind it. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we need some kind of model that gives you, that gives us a lot of information about turbulence. We need a good model about turbines. And we want to look at these two topics from the perspective of coherent structures. Have you, I don't know if you've, you've heard about coherent structure dynamics or if you know what coherent structures are. But the basic idea behind them is that when you look into a flow that can be kind of complex because you, you can have an obstacle or something, you see it and you may think it's random, it's chaotic in a way, but it's actually not. This is a classic example of a flow that has an obstacle right here. And because of vortex shedding, you see these structures that have logic behind them and contain information that can be really useful when you want to understand the physics behind, behind this system. And what I like the most about them is that they happen, they, happen, they happen on many scales in nature. This is actually a satellite picture. And the obstacle in this fluid is an island. Here's another example of vortex shedding. You may, you may have seen this in a fluid dynamics class, fluid mechanics class in a lab, in a really small scale, but it also happens at larger scales. <coughs> it's another example in the atmosphere where our tracers are clouds. So what we want to do is to look at these coherent structures that happen when tidal turbines interact among themselves and with the flow and see if they contain the information that's behind energy fluctuations in array configuration or where you have something like this, a lot of turbines, one next to the other one, and, if, and see uh, what part of the phenomena you see here is because of turbulence and what's not. Okay, so like I told you before, you need two things, a flow model and a turbine model. When it comes to flow, we're, we're using what it's called detached eddy simulation. It's a hybrid LES RANS approach. So it's okay if you don't know much about fluid mechanics models. I'm going to try to explain them with this simple, simple figure. So RANS does not solve all the turbulent characteristics of a flow. It just dissipates them through eddy viscosity. So where we, in the parts of the flow where we don't need a lot of information and detail, for example, in the boundary layer, we, we're going to use this RANS approach. But in other parts, when we want to solve the detail, we're going we're gonna to use, or we're using a more complex model called LES, or large eddy simulation. The idea behind large eddy simulation is that vortices that are smaller than your grid size are not solved, are dissipated through viscosity. But the ones that are bigger and go over your grid are resolved, and you can see them, and study them, analyze them. So, what we're trying to see is all those vortices that are related to turbine and their scales. When it comes to turbine models, we're using uh, sim simple blade element momentum that transform your device, does not solve all the detail of the blade surface, rather it transforms it into a disk where you solve all the characteristics of the, your turbine model in elements on this disk and then you transfer the information back to the flow <coughs> solver. Hopefully, then you're going to see swirl, you're going to see rotation, you're going to see the coherent structures we're looking for. It's important to say that this blade element momentum theory is not accurate enough if you're studying near wake. That's like about five diameters or less from your device. 
But if you're, if you're studying the far away and uh, biggest per perspective of on your flow, it's fairly accurate. That's why we chose this instead of something more complex for turbine models. And hopefully, we're going to be able to, in to give information and insight into specific challenges that are related to marine energy right now. So we talked about energy fluctuation. So hopefully, we're going to understand how stable our energetic resource is. We're going to speak about environmental effects, because tidal channels can, are really fragile ecosystems. And if you, check, if you take energy or if you add turbulence to a tidal channel, how, does, how that affects the environment around your device. And a little bit about the design of turbines. Hopefully, our model and our, our analysis from the point of view of coherent structures is going to be able to shed light into some of these topics. So some preliminary results, mainly what, uh, what I've been doing since I was here, developing the turbine model and the last semester. We did a, we did a mesh refinement analysis that allowed, allowed us to conclude that we don't need 17,000 points in our, di our disk. We can go using a coarser grid, and as long as you have in the order of 500 points in your disk, that should be fine. This is really important because we don't have all the computational resources we want. You have to be efficient from this point of view. This is a comparison about inlet, uh, the inlet profile that is going into our tidal channel that we're simulating. And so far, we've obtained fairly good agreement when it comes to bulk quantities that represent turbine performance. This is, these are thrust coefficients and, and power coefficients. We're, we're under 10% of error of what's being reported. We're using the Parawatt experience. I don't know if you've heard about the Parawatt project. It's something that was done along the universities of Manchester and Edinburgh. So we're comparing our results to them. But unfortunately, I mean, this is research. What we're seeing is that our flow, that's the blue line, this is the velocity profile along the, uh, along the direction of the flow. Our model is recovering way too fast. So you should, be, you should be seeing a deficit all along your tidal channel. It should be taking a, long, a longer <coughs> while to recover. These are also the velocity profiles. So you see here, big deficit where the nacelle of the turbine is, not so big where the blades are. So this is not good, <laughs> obviously. Uh, but the bulk quantities are good. So what, what has been happening and where we, what we're solving right now it's a coupling issue between the turbine model and the flow model. So the flow comes to the turbine model. It's calculating properly the coefficients and the forces. But if, when it comes to give that information back to the flow solver and see the structures behind it, we're not doing that properly. So it's a classic example of two models not communicating properly with each other. This is the area of the disk. As you can see, right in the middle where the nacelle is, we're seeing what we what we were expecting to see, but on the other parts of the disk where the blades are supposed to be, we're not seeing that because, like it says on the slide, the turbine model is not transferring the information correctly to the flow solver. Okay, so that was my short presentation of all my research. Thank you very much for the time again, and I'm glad that I could present to you guys because I couldn't the last time I was here. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you so This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.